Hey folks, so here's something I've been meaning to play with for a while and it's uh, it's a tiny, tiny little CRT. When I say tiny, I mean it's tiny. It's no bigger than my hand. Um, I actually don't know exactly what size it is. Let me grab a ruler. Uh, but I suspect it's five inches. Yeah, there you go. Five inches. Um, this was taken from a one of those uh, portable, when I say portable, the karaoke units with the TV and uh, and the CD player and all that kind of stuff. So I stripped everything out because I didn't want to keep anything. But I kept the uh, monitor and, uh, well, happy to say it's still in working conditions. And uh, I've just been playing, well, been thinking about doing something with it. Uh, and I'm not sure what uh, I could do. It, it's black and white, it takes composite. First, uh, we need to uh, make this guy safe and figure out which one of the coils actually divert horizontal and vertical. So let's plug this off. I'm gonna discharge this guy uh, with my trusty discharge tool. Where is it? There you go, I'm gonna connect this and this together. But you still have to be careful with these things. So, one hand behind your back, uh, connect this to the ground and the grounding pin and all that kind of stuff. And uh, there you go, you heard the click, it was still charged. Yeah, this is disconnected. Um, I'm going to do this a few times for a few minutes just to make sure that all the charge is gone so I can actually safely handle this guy. All right, next thing we are going to need to identify which of these uh, uh, coils are connected. Essentially what this is, you got a coil, you got two coils, uh, one is here, one is, uh, well, I'd say it's underneath here. The so one of the coil directs how the beam is going horizontally and the other one vertically. So first, well, first I'm going to plug my solder station, there you go, uh, and then I'm going to take my trusty multimeter set to continuity and now my um, tube is all discharged now um, it would be okay to touch these though but um, well there you go so these two okay right and left easy so I don't know at this stage which is horizontal which is vertical sometimes it's written here on the PCB but it's it's not the case here um, so I'm just going to disconnect these, power the monitor, um, and see what happens. And we either have a vertical line or horizontal line. There you go. So that's good actually, we've uh, disconnected the vertical vertical uh, line. So you can see the, uh, the beam just uh, flashing there. It's actually going much faster uh, in real life. It's the refresh rate of my camera, but uh, that's perfect. We actually disconnected the horizontal uh, horizontal coil there. So uh, next thing I want to do then is well, connect this to an audio source. So to make this simple, I'm just gonna connect it to a female jack and can plug this in uh, in here, and then maybe plug this into my uh, Mega Drive right here, just as a test, and then we can worry about multiple inputs and uh, uh, amplification, all that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, let's do that. Right, so I got my leads connected here, the orange and yellow. These are going into um, I didn't have a female jack, which, uh, well, it surprised me, but I didn't have one. Goes into my Mega Drive, I'm running a loud game, uh, Midnight Resistance. And, uh, well, here is our output. So right now, we, we're not seeing much, we're just seeing that it goes up and down, but it's hard to gauge exactly uh, what's going on. And that's because our signal isn't quite strong enough. Um, so, what we need to do is run this through a small, small amp. Uh, and luckily I have just uh, one of those cheap eBay amps, audio amp here. Uh, your um, input comes here and uh, we need to supply, uh, well, 8 to 12 volts it says here. Uh, focus, there you go. And then we got ground um, 
uh, left ground and then uh, ground and right. Uh, so we're gonna just uh, connect all this and uh, hopefully we'll get a bit more amplitude on our signal here. So I have my uh, small amp just plugged in and uh, I, I, I was I was actually messing with uh, um, getting an audio out as well out of the amp as well as going to the uh, the, the, the CRT and uh, I thought you know what instead of getting the audio source from my Mega Drive I'm actually going to build a little uh, synth uh, type thing. Uh, this is a 7474. It's a Schmidt trigger inverter thing. So essentially you have, well this is power um, um, plus 5 and, and uh, actually that shouldn't be here. There's no point having that here. I was just messing with stuff. But um, yeah we have our, our uh, ground and plus 5. Uh, on pin 1 we have a hundred uh, microfarad uh, capacitor and this is going to ground of course and bridging pin 1 and pin 2 uh, pin 2 being our output that's going so here is our output it's going to our amp and this is our ground um, so I'm using that as input um, I have this uh, this little pot and uh, the cool thing is if I trigger the pot we should be getting some, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, hold on. So it's essentially a synth. I mean, if I if you find the right frequency and all that kind of stuff to uh, get the right notes, it generates a square wave. Um, of the desired frequency. A um, hundred microfarad seems to be the important thing here in this case. Uh, I've tried a few values and the uh, the pitch gets much lower, much higher depending. Um, the, 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 the less the value of the caps, the less microfarad, uh, the higher pitched and it gets really, really high pitched. Um, but this is pretty cool. So, um, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not still seeing a, a wave, I'm just seeing a very high frequency sort of display, but uh, that's because I need to do the same thing now on the other side. So I'm going to need another one of these uh, because I don't think... No, if I mix the two signals, I'll just get a... Um, uh, what will I get? I'm not sure. But I definitely need another one of these, uh, which I don't have handy. So I'm going to order one and, uh, well, at some point uh, continue this video um, because, I don't know, it's a cool experiment. It might fail, ultimately. It's just a... It's just a cool thing to do, I think. All right, so I have to put this on the side for a while. Um, when I say a while, it's probably a year and a half now, but uh, um, I just decided to uh, pick it up again because it was just in the back of my mind. And what I wanted to see, well, it's just to recap for myself because you've just seen the previous segment, uh, but it's just I had this um, uh, X axis going up and down but the y-axis was just scanning so fast we couldn't see anything on screen. So what I'm trying to do here is slightly different. It's the same setup, but I've just added an app and the Schmidt trigger on the y-axis. On oh, sorry, yeah, on the to drive the uh, the, the y-axis. So we shouldn't see or the x-axis, sorry. But so we shouldn't see like a, a wave. What we'll probably see is the beam just going in one direction like that and probably just coming back or resolving somewhere back to the center so not a circle but probably like a squiggly lines that kind of come back uh, that kind of way uh, at a certain speed so i have my uh, two schmidt trigger to control x and y uh, amps i'm just going to maybe increase it a bit just so i can see you can actually see the beam going up slightly let me focus this camera a bit better on the uh, screen there you go, should be okay. Um, yeah, got a bit more size, and then I'm just gonna slowly increase. These are 10k parts, you can see. <laughs> it's so cool. It's like a. There you go. These are 10k parts, they're probably a bit too big for, for this, but that's all I had handy. Really, I'd say. A 1k part will probably do, you know, something so a 2.2k or something like that. But there you go, this is what it can increase this, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. 
not much to be gained here. Um, it's going to be hard to uh, proper get proper a uh, sharp image, but if you change the cap value slightly so it, there's more edges, um, you can see what this Schmidt trigger is doing. It's pulsing up from center, it's pulsing up. It's a square wave generator essentially, so it's pulsing up like a square wave for a while, and while it's up, it's also pulsing this way, uh, which is the way I've set it up. So it's pulsing up, phew, pulsing this way, coming back, probably overshooting, pulsing the other way. So it's it's kind of phew, 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 doing this kind of stuff, and uh, it's just going back to center. So uh, if you expand it a bit, there you go. You can sort of see a bit better what the, uh, the cap is doing. It's not super stable. I'm not using very good connections and anything like that. Let me change the cap back. I can probably get different shapes with a different uh, cap value. This is very crude, but it just really was just an experiment to see if I could just drive the beam uh, on its own, like a vector. Essentially, what we've done is just converted this little scanline uh, raster CRT into just a, a vector. CRT by just controlling the electron beam directly and that's how vectors work you know monitors and tubes tubes are tubes you know it's what you tell it to do so and the fact that you can control the electron beam to go from here back to here switch off back to here switch off back to here and then when it's, it arrives here it goes all the way back you need, you need to switch it off you can control that manually it's the driver board that does that so if you make a, a little bypass circuit that tells it to do something else it will do exactly that so technically there's no reason why I couldn't use this uh, setup as a, a little vector monitor maybe to drive one of those uh, uh, asteroid FPGA or one of those vector game FPGA. Um, maybe maybe in another video. I think this little experiment, I didn't know where I was going to go with this with this thing uh, when I started and I just started filming just in case I get something cool which I think I did. Um, now the Schmidt trigger is probably not the best way to control this, it's just to get some movement and something uh, changing on screen so we could see. Uh, and I haven't checked any of the values, I just picked stuff randomly from my from my uh, box of uh, just spares. But this is kind of cool, isn't it? Um, but anyway, there you go folks, I hope this was interesting, I think we'll leave it at this here for now, and then maybe pick this up again. Um, once I've done a bit of research and no more, but it was just a, an experiment. Folks, I hope this was interesting. Don't forget you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There is a Discord server if you want to talk about that kind of stuff. There's a YouTube membership and a Patreon page if you want to help the channel. Folks, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.